shortest of the stories about the sheep this year. It's, very, it's the shortest gospel year, but it's always called Good Shepherd Sunday. So I've been waiting to tell the story for about six months for today on the idea of a shepherd. A few of you have had the opportunity or the crisis to meet my niece, my youngest niece, and her German shepherd. He is a purebred, 120 pound. He is heavier than many of the kids in this building right now. I thought about bringing him to this mass, but if he came to this mass, the mothers with children would run out of the building. Okay, he comes up about this high, and on his hind legs, he's as tall as a door frame. He is a truly frightening specimen of canine life. His bark, you could hear in Southside. You know, the first time I met him, I ran. You know, and that's the way he wants it. His job is to guard the house. No one, no one will go near my niece. No one. I mean, I would, his, his teeth are this big, and they're razor sharp, you know? He is the shepherd of the house. But what, one day, I, after I kind of got to know him and he knew who I was, I pulled up to the house, and he didn't come running to the door which he always did. And I said to my brother, what's going on there? He said, he knows the sound of your car. I said, he knows my car? I have prisoners who don't know the sound of my car. You know, but he's that intelligent. He, you know, he just, he just knows. He knows the car. He sniffs my niece's car. He knows when she's home. Unbelievable. That's what Jesus is trying to say when he uses, the sheep know the voice. There's a connection, there's an intimacy between the good shepherd and the sheep. They know his voice. They won't follow somebody else, they'll follow him. He doesn't have to brand them like they do cattle. They know, they're mad. It's, it's amazing. There's just a connection. How do you get that? Because that's what has to be true between the bishop and the people. Former bishop of the diocese, that was the theme of his installation 35, 36 years ago. And it has to be the connection between the priest and the parishioners. A shepherd to his people. That, that has to be present. How do you get that? And there's three things you have to have. Truth, time, and trust. Now, this is a true story. About two years ago, they appointed a new pastor up in a church in Mid Valley. The parish was struggling. I'm the vicar for the northern region of the diocese, and I know the parishes are in trouble. People were, were not being excited about religion, and they sent this guy in. Not a week had passed. People were coming up to me and saying, who's the new pastor up at such and such a parish? And I kind of laughed, because I knew what was going to happen. The guy came out on his first day, told the truth, that he had some serious demons that had He'd been on and off the job. A very talented guy, but he had demons. And he talked about it his first day. Instant connection. People are flocking. I bet more people go there than any other church in this area on a Sunday morning. Because he's so truthful. He's honest about his problem. He's had, he's had serious demons. And many of the people are saying, I have the same demon. And there's just a relationship. Because he told the truth. The second thing is time. Now, if you're a sharp person, and you guys are, it's a miserable day, it's 8 o'clock and we're here, you notice you don't see any priest changes in the Catholic light anymore, once in a while. There used to be long lists, like four or five times a year. Not anymore. Because we got a bishop who realized that the most important thing is time. Over the course of time, you begin to trust and know the priest, and the priest gets to know and trust you. That, you know, all the books on great Catholic parishes, first requirement, the pastor has to be there at least five to ten years. At least five to ten. It takes that time. It takes that time. That's why Ben Barry doesn't move priests around. We got a bishop who understands the way it works. Truth, time, and then there's trust. And the first two lead to the third. If he asks for money, it's because he needs it. He watches every penny. If you tell him something, it stays there. That's the relation. I can look all right, I know a lot of problems, a lot of you have. They go no further than my mind. And that's not because of confession or something, that's just because of the way a good pastor is. Your secrets are safe with me. Your problems are known to me and only me. 
It's the way it should be. That's why when the trust is broken, it is particularly difficult to reestablish and restore, as we have seen. The Pope appoints a bishop. The bishop appoints the priest. But the people appoint him as the shepherd. If and only if they trust him, especially with their kids. How long will that take? Only God knows. And only you can make that happen. Let us stand, my friends, and we'll profess our faith.